what Luis said, there are some elements I do agree, but there are also some elements I totally disagree. Let's talk about the elements that I agree. Well, these are the match stats. It does mean that Real Madrid, Madrid remain perfect to start the season coming out of this one. They are top of the table, jumping back ahead of Barcelona, who are two points. As it is 10th in La Liga standing, Real Madrid tops the chart, two points ahead Barcelona, in my opinion, the real rival this year, the real competitor of Real Madrid for La Liga this season is simply Barcelona. Real Madrid has 18 points, which means Real Madrid has won 6 out of 6. It's behind them. As for Atleti, they are down in 7th. Wow, Luis, it was almost a tale of two halves in the fact that we saw some great goals from Real Madrid in the first half, and then it just seemed to be tensions boiling over in the second half. If you look back Real Madrid's performance in general, Real Madrid is a little bit slow at first half, and they increased their intensity in second half and ultimately scored the goals. But this match was totally different. First half, Real Madrid created a couple of good chances, and he scored two goals. But after scoring two goals, Real Madrid a little bit slowed down the tempo, a little bit too much for my liking. But a win is a win. Well, if someone missed a little bit of drama at the Civitas Metropolitano, once again, uh, we had it. I think the Atletico Madrid did a good reaction in the second half, even though we didn't see much in the first 20 minutes. We could see that they had the ball, but Madrid was uh, controlling the game every single moment. So we were expecting something else. But at the end, it wasn't enough. In the reaction they had, when Hermoso scored the goal, that's when Atletico de Madrid does the best. That's when Atletico de Madrid crowd start uh, backing up the team. And you can see that there is something else to be played. But then Hermoso, because of that atmosphere that has been created in the minute before, when he was uh, arguing with uh, Carvajal, received a second yellow card, and then you stop everything that could happen in those maybe eight, 10 minutes. So at the end, it's another result for Atletico Madrid, the one that we were expecting. We thought that with a more aggressive in attack Atletico Madrid, we could see more chances. It's true that in the second half, we've seen corner kicks, we've seen a couple of chances, but not enough to get a result from this Real Madrid. Then once again, they look... What Luis said, there are some elements I do agree, but there are also some elements I totally disagree. Let's talk about the elements that I agree. Atletico was fierce. They were aggressive. They were actually pressing a lot higher. At times, this Atletico reminded me of the old Atletico. Like they would not let you breathe. They will keep pressuring. They will keep pressing. And we saw that moments multiple times in today's match. And in fact, they had more possession than Real Madrid, which is a little bit surprising given Real Madrid always tends to dominate in terms of possession against Atletico Madrid. Real Madrid had more big chance creation than Atletico Madrid. Now the numbers, the total number of shots is more for Atletico because most of their shots were almost half of the field. And aside from Griezmann's long shot, most of the shots were pretty mild. They didn't even bother Rotua. Also, only way Atletico were creating chance or causing a little bit problems at Real Madrid's defense is through set pieces, corner or free kick. That's it. So strong, so solid, so controlling the game in every single moment. Even when you, it looks that Atletico Madrid will have a chance to react, to, to get back or even equalize the game, they were not bothered. Then is when they start Modric, uh, they start Tuameni, uh, they start Kamabinga having the ball, cross with the ball. The, no one can regain the ball away from them. And once again, three points for Real Madrid. Okay, at this point, I agree totally 100% of what he said. Yeah, that's true. When Real Madrid did not have the ball, they didn't look threatened by Atletico at all. But when Real Madrid had the control, Atletico didn't seem to do anything at all. They didn't have any response. Despite Real Madrid did not create a lot of chances or many chances, I think we created four clear cut chances. Real Madrid looked totally comfortable. It felt like they knew what they're doing. Yeah, it's not kind of exciting football for Real Madrid fans. It's all about controlling the game and winning. That's what this Real Madrid team cares. If you look at Real Madrid's performance last year, when Benzema was out of the field or because of injury or whatnot, Real Madrid did not have answer to that. Like Real Madrid not only did not score goals, they even did not know how to win a game. This year, despite Benzema is off the field, Real Madrid had answer 
how to score goals and how to win a game. This is a huge improvement. They're just too much to handle for Atleti today, Real Madrid. Well, I think in Absolutely, there's a huge difference. Currently, Real Madrid is far better than Atletico Madrid. That's simply the fact. Just in something we mentioned in the pregame, the moments of transition is where Real Madrid are truly dangerous and far better than Atletico Madrid. And so while in the first half it looked as if it was a good start for Atletico Madrid... Ali absolutely nailed it. The transition of this Real Madrid team is astonishingly fast. Like whenever Real Madrid has the chance to go fast forward, they'll take the chance. And having Chouamani at midfield gave Real Madrid teams more momentum to attack fast. As you have seen, the first goal of Real Madrid what a pass from Chouamani to Rodrigo. The perfect placement and perfect positioning by Rodrigo and what a finish. Additionally, I totally second to what LA said. There is a clear difference in terms of quality of Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. Are Real Madrid the best team in the world right now? Okay, this is a very interesting question. I didn't expect this question, but I'm not going to answer this question because I'm a Real Madrid fan, so I'm biased. But I'll point out some important statistics. Real Madrid is the only big team. They have won every single match this season. Alongside, Real Madrid is the current Champions League winner and La Liga champion. So if you combine all those, you conclude yourself. I suppose you can make that argument. Uh, I think we're going to get answers to that or, or close to that when they play against Barcelona in El Clásico. And it's going to be the true test for both teams. This year, El Clásico is going to be really important for La Liga title. For both teams, if they want to win La Liga title, they have to win. In terms of performance, you can see Barcelona has drastic improvements since they got Lewandowski. On the other hand, this Real Madrid team knows how to get the result, even if when they don't play the best game. What do you think of that question, Luis, as to whether they're the best team in the world right now? It has to be at the top of there, of course, after what they've done last year and they continue doing it. Yeah, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Manchester City, Liverpool, they are top teams that they could face this uh, Real Madrid. Did you say Liverpool? I mean, did you watch how Liverpool plays this season? Carlo, it started as a really difficult night, but two two goals scored from Madrid. It, it felt from that moment on that you were very much in control. Yeah, it's true. We started with difficulties, but at, um, as, as usual, as normal, when you play a derby, and after that, we started to build up good uh, from the back. We had the opportunity to create problems, and we did really well in the, the two goals because we were really effective there. And, and after that, we controlled the game. A little bit too much, in my opinion, because we could create problem. So this is why I respect Carlo that he's honest about the team's evaluation. He literally said we had too much control for his liking. That's true. Also to point out one of the important things that I have noticed, we try to build up from the back, but at times to force building up from the back leads to some mistakes. And in my opinion, sometimes rather than trying forcing out from the back, we should sometimes clear the ball when it's risky. Still but uh, we decided to control maybe the last uh, game uh, of this first period of uh, uh, the season and the energy is not so high at this moment. Let me ask you about the... Uh, to be honest, it's really difficult to play on this ground. The rival fans and the aggressive nature of the fans and the loudness, everything does affect the mentality of the players. Rodrigo scored a brilliant goal playing in the role that, that was filling in for Benzema as almost as a false nine. And Valverde, another goal for him. It looks very much like you probably won't have to tear up your coaching badge. <laughs> hey, this is a really funny question because Carlo literally said that he will tear up his coaching badge if Valverde doesn't score 10 goals. What we have seen so far, Valverde might have scored more than 10 goals, which is Really amazing for us. I mean, he's scoring like a typical right winger. I think that uh, Valverde is going to score more than 10 goals, and so I can keep my, my carnet. It's true that uh, Rodrigo did really well. I, I said to him, don't be too much involved in play. Be ready to attack at the back. And the first goal was fantastic. Fantastic pass of Chouamini. And the second goal was a fantastic counter attack of uh, Vinicius as usual that uh, give us the possibility to control the game. This is a really important topic to discuss, the way Rodrigo was playing. Carlos said he advised Rodrigo not to 
do that much build up not to drop that deep that what he does sometimes sometimes he was playing like benzema dropping so deep which is causing problems because when he was dropping back so deep there was no one in the front side when benzema does drop back in the deep someone always take that place or benzema have better transition he knows the movement he reads that opponent team really well Rodriguez Young, he is still missing that spark. In my opinion, instead of trying to emulate the Benzema's role, what Rodriguez should do, try to make the runs behind the defenders. That's what he's good at. And when he did that, we saw the result. From him, Sid, he's got to be happy with what he saw. I mean, those two goals from Real Madrid today were just wonderful to witness. Brilliant. Uh, and the first goal in particular, I mean, there are different types of goals, I suppose, but the first goal in particular, because actually I thought what Ancelotti said there was really, really interesting. And, and, and actually, in a way, it means that there's a mistake in my question, in that I said that Rodrigo is there playing the Benzema role as a false number nine. But as Ancelotti makes the point there, actually, it's not false at all. He wants him to be a number nine. He's saying to him that despite the fact that this is a guy who's a winger, don't come back looking for the ball too much. Don't try and get involved too much. You are there as a forward to get beyond the defence, which he does on that goal, which he takes absolutely brilliantly. Uh, the second goal, as you say, is it's, it's not quite as good a goal in terms of the way it ends up, because, of course, it's a, a shot off the post and, and, and Valverde comes steaming in to, to finish up a relatively easy, I'm not going to go quite so far as to call it easy, but a relatively easy finish. But the interchange between Vinicius and, and, and Modric was fantastic. And when Vinicius is up and running, you just can't stop him. Uh, it was pretty bad to to add to what she said, another reason why Rodrigo cannot play as a false nine and why he should play as like number nine. Why? Because when you want to play as a false nine, you have to have hold up play. Unfortunately, Rodrigo doesn't have the physicality to have that role. So he should rather play to his strength, not to try to emulate Benzema. Tempered affair at the end. And said, how have Atleti taken that defeat afterwards from what you've seen? After their friends on the field and off the field racism, they deserve to lose. Listening to, to Janon Black, who we, we spoke to post-game, he, he was talking about feeling sad about it, feeling sad about the fact that they played well and not got anything, that he felt that they, they, they'd actually deserved a little bit more, that the start was really, really good, and then suddenly, bang, they've been caught by Real Madrid twice. Unfortunately, they did not create clear cut chances. So to summarize a couple of key points, could we play better than what we played? Absolutely. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. Just to let you know, winning at Metropolitan, like at Lodigas home, is always challenging. It's not easy job at all. Not many teams go there and win. And most importantly, winning against them and having three points, three vital points against one of our most fierce rivals is simply amazing. If you follow my channel for a long time, you know that I barely talk about referee however today we have to talk about the referee this referee the way he was doing a referee job today felt like he wasn't compatible for this type of match he did not have the authority to dictate the game when atletico madrid players are literally fouling real madrid players aggressively with bad intention he was literally watching and somehow he was just blind and at times he was giving some real madrid players yellow card for no reason like the yellow card he gave to mendy is it yellow? How much blind, how much bias you have to be to do decision like this? And for La Liga, please get a better referee. 